Good morning guys, welcome back to another video with me. If you're new, my name is Ailey and on this channel you will find daily starch solution and low calorie density eating as a busy mum, how I do this and I've lost 60 pounds in the last couple of years um, and it's all really about building healthy habits, small little habits over time incrementally to lead you to your goals and where you want to be. So I want to show you how I put these little habits in place um, and hopefully show you some delicious food along the way. I'm a volume eater so it's going to be massive portions as well. Um, Romy and I have just gotten back from like a like almost like a two hour, I'm going to kneel down because this table is a weird height. Um, we've just been on a walk for like a two hour hike. Well, not a hike, it was a very slow plod. Basically we did a very small circuit in our forest, but I put Romy down because she really wanted to. She's getting to the age where she just wants to go down now. And we were just wandering at a snail's pace for about two hours, but she had such a lovely time and hopefully she'll be absolutely knackered later. But I am very proud of myself because before we even left, while I was getting Abe's breakfast and getting him ready for school, I made loads and loads of veggies. So, oh, don't eat that sweetness. So all my veggies are ready to rumble. Now our fridge is looking very, very naked. We are having, we basically have no veggies in there. Um, and we need to do a shop immediately today. So James is gonna do that on the way back um, from work. Um, but I did have purple cabbage. So we're having purple cabbage. Um, and I think I threw some carrots in there as well for good measure, because I, I wanted to have some variety. As you guys know, I love to start my day with veggies. That is one of the habits that I have incorporated into my life as of the last, I don't know, three, four, five months. And it is amazing. You guys know that vegetables are the food's lowest in calorie density on the planet. And therefore, if you're struggling to see weight loss and you really want to up your game, or even if you just want to put one healthy habit in place, I highly recommend getting in as many veggies as humanly possible. And whether I found that um, easiest, not only in, to incorporate it into every meal, but to start my day with veggies gives me such like a positive boost for the day. I feel really proud of myself that I've started with veggies. I know that if the next meal doesn't go according to plan perfectly, at least I've started with those veggies. Um, so anyway, I highly recommend starting with veggies. There's so many benefits. You stay full and satisfied for ages when you get in loads of bulk to your tummy, when you activate your stretch receptors and it's so powerful. So if in doubt, start your day with veggies. Anyway, but I wanna talk about and quickly just say what is interesting. So on our walk, Romy and I were chatting. I say chatting, I mean, I was chatting. Um, we were chatting about breakfast and we decided, both of us decided we wanted some banana ice cream. Now I did freeze loads of bananas yesterday so we can jump into that. So when I got home, I was like, yay, let's make some banana ice cream. Uh, Cause I thought that'd be delicious and I was really hungry for it. But then I thought, oh, hold on a second, I've got all my veggies. So we need to eat the veggies first before we eat anything else and then we'll move on to the banana ice cream. And then I thought, I'm not really hungry for my veggies, but I am hungry for the ice cream. And you know what that tells me? That tells me that I'm not truly hungry. If you are truly genuinely hungry, you will be hungry enough to eat your veggies. As in the veggies will taste really delicious because you are that hungry. So because I know I'm not hungry enough for my veggies, I'm not hungry yet and therefore I need to wait a little while until I'm actually ready for those veggies and I'm actually really excited about those veggies. So I'm going to make myself a quick little drink um, and Romy and I are going to go into maybe the garden and play with some stones or we might go into the front room and do some playing for a little while and then I'll let you know at some point I'll be like yay veggies. So you guys know that progress is all about building little tiny habits. So because the last time we chatted when I was in the garden um, and I was doing my weights and I was like, yeah, I'm doing my weights while I'm um, playing with Romy. I'm now in the garden and I just thought about that and I was thinking, I'm in the garden. I should probably have my weights. And it was a really cool thought to have. Um, and it, I, it wasn't really something I was probably thinking about. So I'm going to go and get my weights. And what I was trying to think about is the fact that we're going to be in the garden quite a lot. Um, just playing and chilling as the weather gets nicer and nicer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and build a habit. It's called habit stacking. When you do one thing and then the next thing you automatically do just after that thing. So when Romy and I come out into the garden to play, the next thing that I want to do is I want to bring my little weights out. And first, th so the next thing is just to bring my weights out. 
And then the next thing after that is hopefully once I've brought my weights out, that is going to help me actually do some lovely arm exercises whilst I'm in the garden. Um, because, you know, I can just chat to Romy, chill with Romy, play with Romy and still do my weights at the no, same no. time. So if you no. have, like yeah. I was chatting about the other day, an area in your life where you think, hmm, I don't really need to use my arms or use my legs or whatever. I could do some squats, I could do some whatever. Try and build some habits and do some habit stacking based on stuff that you're already doing. So for me, going out in the garden, doing some arm weights. You know, going to pee, doing some squats. Um, yeah. Whatever it is, waiting for the kettle, doing some star jumps or whatever it is. And I know that each individual thing sounds really small and tiny in and of itself and it is but that is the magic and that is how you make progress is by doing tiny things that seem easy unimportant and just like why would i even bother doing you know 20 of those i mean that sounds just so stupid but the way you build habits and the way you see progress is by doing those little tiny things on repeat again and again and again and again and again and that is how i have lost 60 pounds and that is how i know loads of other people have seen progress in their lives by doing really small, non-extraordinary things every single day to see incredible change. So if you're at the beginning of your journey and, you have, and you're thinking to yourself, I have to do something amazing to lose 60, 70, 80, even 100 pounds, whatever it is, you don't have to do something amazing. You just have to do something really tiny and boring. You just have to do it every single day. So anyway, I know I talked about this the other day. I just thought I'd just reiterate it because it is such an important factor when you're trying to think, when you're thinking about weight loss or thinking about, you know, building any habits into your life so i'm gonna go and i'm gonna go and get my weights and then we're gonna do a little bit of arms and i'm very excited about it i'm excited that i remembered and i'm excited to build this as a habit so let's do it this one is very powerful for the shoulders absolutely amazing that one is just a burnout that is fantastic i can't do bicep curls with these tiny ones because i don't get any feeling in them so i need to get invested in some bigger weights but i'm also loving the tricep dips as well so those are my four that I've found, uh, those are my three that I've found that I really enjoy. About one minute in and I am burning, burning, burning. Man, can I feel it. That is powerful stuff. Whew. What I like to do is I like to push it to the limit where I can't go any further and that's how I know I've got real muscle fatigue and I have, and I literally can't go anymore and I've really worked that muscle. Oh my gosh. Oh, that was amazing. It was getting hot, so I've changed into my uh, workout stuff. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like three or four sets of them. So I've done that one, and now let's do sideies. I don't think I could do another one. Oh, oh. Tell you what, these tiny weights, they look pretty, uh, pretty flimsy, but I tell you, there's some good stuff. I hope you guys appreciate that. I'm not one of those YouTubers who just like gets the perfect angle to have like the sexiest body every time. I've got my tummy hanging out, you know. Romy has deteriorated fast. She is knackered and starving, so she's quickly eating some food. I need to have my breakfast because I'm about to be stuck on the couch for about two hours feeding Romy, so I don't have time to make ice cream, which is very sad. So we're gonna have ice cream for lunch and that's okay. But I do have all my veggies, which is great. Um, and the quickest thing I could think of that I actually really fancy is plantain. I'm gonna steam up two plantains quickly in the microwave, chop up an apple and have that with my veggies. So, so simple. So I've decided to pair my mountain of veggies with some lovely fruit. So I've got a pear and an apple because I realised I haven't really been eating the pears recently. Right, and then I've got my ooey gooey squidgy plantain. Have a look at that, guys. This is going to be amazing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yum. And for a beanie element, I'm just adding two of my little chickpea balls and stuffing them in there. Oh, my God. Look at this feast, guys. This actually looks ridiculous. Uh, so darn delicious. So low calorie density. Um, satisfying. You've got your starch, you've got your beans, you've got your veggies, you've got your fruit. It basically encompasses everything that you could ever dream of in a meal. And um, this, is how, this is how you can do it. Super simple. Didn't take long to put together. Aww. Romy and I are just making some ice cream. She's been asleep for ages. And um, I want to show you what we've got going on. So James came back. So we were just chatting while I was making this. Um, so basically you've just got about, I don't know, four or five bananas worth in there. And I'm just about to add some yummy little flavorings. Okay, so I'm going peanut butter chocolate as per usual. And I always love to do a bit of vanilla. Oh, you'd like to help mommy. You can help mommy. So we're gonna do, here we go, Roms. A tablespoon of PB2 and some carob powder. 
I'm gonna do two tablespoons of cara powder rum rum. Here you go, one. Say one. Good girl. I'm also gonna add in these little uh, leftover chickpea, I'm gonna call it chickpea chocolate cookie dough kind of stuff um, that I had left over from the other day, which is very tasty. Um, I'm just gonna whack that in and then pulse it a little bit just so it gets like kind of like processed but we still want to have loads of chunks in there that's what gives us that kind of ben and jerry's no. ice cream effect no. here we go the final ice creamy product the cookie dough chunks are a little bit smaller than last time but it is very very delicious this is my new favorite way to have a bit of ice cream and you get beans in mm, yum i know it's a bit of a simple recipe um yeah. barely even a recipe yeah. and i'm yeah. sorry about that I'd love to show you guys more in-depth stuff every single day, but it's a, it's a busy one, and this is what I fancied. Mm. But Romy says, it's good stuff. I want to share with you what happened this morning. It was very sad. So basically, tonight we were meant to be having loads and loads of delis delicious sushi, and we were all super excited about it. So I put the rice on in the Instant Pot, and the Instant Pot decided to completely break down on us, and now we have half-cooked, half-super crunchy rice. And I made loads of it because I thought... It could last a few days. And now we've got six cups of rice that is basically not usable. <clears throat> and I don't know what to do with it, to be honest. Um, I was thinking about like a risotto, but then James said, well, it's gonna be like super, super squidgy. And I don't know if that would be good. I still think it would work well. I think I'm gonna do that. But James also said, maybe we could turn it into like a burger. So I'm wondering if I could add it to our mushroom burger that we're gonna have tomorrow. Basically, so I've got, yeah, I'm very upset. <laughs> we're not gonna have sushi tonight. And this rice is completely inedible. Um, so I'm really worried um, about this Instant Pot. It's kind of just been a little bit, you know, on the decline, basically. And we gave it a really good scrub. Basically, whenever I do beans, it always messes up this little bit at the top. And so it just doesn't, um, it just doesn't suction itself properly. Um, so I'm really scared. I really want some sushi, but I'm scared to put more rice in in case it happens again. And then I'll have just even more rice that's not usable. Um, but at the same time, I can't never use the Instant Pot again. I might do a trial of the Instant Pot with just water and like one potato in it or something, um, just to see how that goes. And if that works well, maybe I will put some sushi rice on. And I do need to trigger, try and figure out what to do with it. If you guys have ever had this happen to you before and you've used the rice for something, please let me know down below. On another note, James is amazing and has bought me the biggest sweet potatoes <laughs> known to man. Like, I, I, was, I was joking and I was saying, do you reckon I could eat that in one sitting? And I actually genuinely think I could because I've eaten three or four sweet potatoes in a sitting. So, I, I mean, I could, I could totally do that. Anyway, that is very, very exciting. Um, but yes, maybe let's let's try the Instant Pot out. Let's see if it's going to work because, um, yeah, I really am dying for some sushi and I want yeah. some sushi. Okay, so would you know the Instant Pot did pressurise this time round. So... I can put some sushi rice on right now, some new sushi rice, but I don't want to waste this stuff. So I'm going to put half of it in here with some water and see if I can rehydrate it, bring it to life. I feel like it's going to go badly wrong, but I feel like I need to try it because I don't want to waste it. I guess the worst that can happen with this is that I make rice pudding for breakfast tomorrow morning and that wouldn't be too bad. Romy is losing her mind. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are as invested in this rice as I am. Back at home in a noisy kitchen and we basically, we think we salvaged some of the rice, uh, but it's a little bit questionable. So some people are going to have rice, <laughs> but I've got potatoes. So I'm going to be having some potatoes instead. Not because the rice is bad, no, really, just because really. this potato needs to be eaten. I'll feed this shit to my kids and my <laughs> husband, but me, it's touching it. And you guys could have had potatoes if you wanted to. Oh, Jamesy, can you show everyone what we've actually got? So on top of the chili that we've got, where the heck is the chili? Well, not only have we got some leftover chili and the kids have got their blended version, but we also have some oil-free refried refried beans that we managed to pick up probably, I don't know where from, Morrison's or somewhere? Oh, that does smell very lovely. So anyway, oil-free, that's a good one if you're in, in the UK. So I'm doing like chili cheese fries and I would do cheese sauce if I could be bothered, but I can't be bothered. So I'm going to start off with one gigantic potato and take it from there, see if I need any more. Okay, so I'm going in with like Mexi flavour. So I've got onion powder here, cumin and smoked paprika and some trusty garlic salt. 
Okay, there we go, into the air fryer for about 15 minutes. My chips are out of the air fryer and look how gorgeous they look. So let's load this baby up. I'm very excited because I'm very hungry. But as you saw, I was uh, munching on this carrot and I've also got myself a nice beverage. And that is one of the strategies. That's one of the things that I like to do whilst I'm making dinner because otherwise I have a tendency to snack on everything that's around me. But this is perfect. Give me something to keep my hands and mouth occupied. So if you're having trouble with snacking while you're making dinner, highly recommend carrot and a cup of tea or a cup of something i've got to wake me up oh my gosh where am i going to put my broccoli hold on i'm gonna to have to move these chips to the side i forgot i did a mountain of broccoli and i also put a little bit of sweet corn in there because i thought that'd be a nice little extra sweet touch i just had a bit of a trauma i found a bug a large bug in one of my broccolis so i had a little panic but james has helped me go through every single piece of broccoli and he assures me that i am so safe and i'm not going to be eating bugs in my broccoli but isn't that just the worst thing when there's a bug in your food, it can often put you off your entire meal. But I'm going to try and sort my head out and try and just enjoy this meal because otherwise that'd be really sad. Okay, anyway, so I've got some chilli going on. So I'm just going to do a nice dusting of chilli in here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I know people think I eat a lot of food. And I guess to a normal average human, this is quite a lot of food. However... I will say that is one of my strategies for stopping late night snacking, staying consistent, is basically eating a lot of food so that I am really satisfied. So obviously, I don't know how much you guys are eating, if you guys are struggling with, um, with weight loss or with staying consistent or any of those. Basically, my first piece of advice is to make sure you're eating a lot of food, even though it looks ridiculous. Obviously, just remember, I have got an entire head of broccoli in here, one potato and some beans. So there's not actually that much, but when you add all of the veggies in together, it does look gigantic, but that is my secret. Make sure you're eating a lot of food. You don't have to eat as much as me. Eat as much as you need to feel satisfied, but it's those moments when you get hungry or when you're not fully satisfied, that's when it's really hard to stay consistent. If there's, if you're out and about or late at night, you go in, you lick your kids' peanut butter, whatever it happens to be. It's probably because you're not eating enough food and you're not actually satisfied. Um, and I know also I talk about listening to your hunger fullness cues and making sure you're not too overfull. It really depends where you are in your journey. If you are still having trouble staying consistent, eat more food to be consistent. If you are consistent and you're still not seeing weight loss, then definitely start thinking about more hunger fullness cues kind of stuff. So it really depends on where you are. But anyway... I hope that was helpful. I'm gonna go and enjoy this massive feast. I'm very, very excited. I'm gonna try not to think about bugs. I'm actually gonna add the rest of this chili because I wanted to make it look aesthetically pleasing before, but for real hunger purposes, I need the whole darn thing. So, so there we go. <laughs> also, when you have a dish, let's say chili, <clears throat> find different things that you can do with it. So yesterday, Yesterday I put it in wraps. You could have it with rice, you can have it with potatoes. You can really mix it up and it makes a completely different meal from the same thing. I just thought I'd let you know I've done a lovely bouncing workout. Just my own little routine. Sometimes I like to just go wild with it and just do what I fancy. So I did some leg bum stuff, did some arm stuff, and I just bounced around like a crazy idiot. Um, but yeah, it was really fun. And I was thinking the hardest part is starting. Not only is the hardest part starting to bounce, but it's also starting to stop. Like when I'm bouncing, I really find it hard to stop, which means I'm enjoying it. But like starting anything is hard, even starting stopping. Does that make any sense? I don't really know. Anyway, I'm a little bit tired. I have decided to sit down and work on my meal plan. Basically, it's almost ready to go. I've made all the recipes. I've taken all the pictures. I just need to write the darn thing. And for some reason, I've got like writer's block with it. Not writer's block. I just, I find it hard to sit down and just do it. So like anything in this world, I'm going to start doing it. I'm just going to focus on the starting part and not think about the whole journey in and of itself. Um, and I'm just going to get started. I'm going to see what I can actually accomplish today. Whether it's a page or two pages, that is great. Um, anyway, I'm going to go and do that. And also, I have got quite a busy day tomorrow because I'm going to be heading into my old cheese business, Tyne Cheese, to help them out with a the mozzarella. Um, and so that, therefore I'm going to be on the go a lot tomorrow. So I wanted to do a little bit of prep. So I might put some sweet potatoes in the oven tonight or I might do it first thing in the morning. I'm not quite sure because those sweet potatoes are so gigantic and they look so incredible. 
I have to dive into them. I may just, oh my God, it'd be so much fun to have a day of eating nothing but sweet potatoes tomorrow and veggies, obviously. Um, that could be really fun. <laughs> Maybe not fun for you guys to watch, but fun for me to eat. <laughs> anyway, um, I will chat to you guys tomorrow. And uh, yeah, have a good one.